The main idea in this video that I want to talk about is that not all vectors are arrows. This would be obvious to some people, but not to everyone, and it certainly wasn't obvious to me when I first started learning linear algebra, so I just want to talk about it a little bit. Remember that if we have points, an ordered pair AB in R squared, we can draw a diagram like this, where we have a positive x-axis, positive y, negative x, negative y. I'm just going to assume that x and y are positive, or in this case a and b, so that I can draw an arrow emanating from the origin to a equal to ab. This arrow has a magnitude and a direction, and it satisfies the axioms for a vector space. I'll get to that definition in a minute. But observe the geometric characteristics of this. If we want the length of this arrow, we'll denote the arrow as OA, we'll put these bars on it, and we will say that it is equal to the root of A squared plus B squared, and we can observe that this is the same thing as having the dot product of the vectors AB and AB, that is the dot product of AB with itself, and we take the square root of that. We can also recall the formula that says X dot Y is equal to mod X mod y cosine theta, assuming that x and y are vectors in this case, and that theta is the angle between x and y, like this. Now, not all vectors can be drawn in this way, because observe the axioms for a vector space. A vector space over a field f, well in this case let's just use the real numbers, because the real numbers are a field. What is it? It is a set v together with an addition under which v and this plus form an abelian group and it has a scalar multiplication by elements of r that is distributive and associative. So if we look at this set v, anything that satisfies all of these axioms will also be a vector. So that set v could be anything we want. It could be those ordered pairs in r squared, just like ab. ab could be a member of of v if v is equal to r squared, but v doesn't have to be that, because what about another example? What if v is actually the set of functions such that f is continuous on minus 1, 1, and f goes from minus 1, 1 to r? These f's cannot be drawn as arrows, but just because with v together with addition being pointwise, pointwise function addition, that is, we can see that v will form a vector space where the field, of course, is real numbers. So the scalar field is just r. So this is a vector space. But can we draw these things as arrows? No, we cannot. However, we can pretend as if they are and assign magnitudes to them and find the angles between them. How are we going to do that? Well, one of the ways that we can do this is by using a norm, a norm formed from an inner product. Recall that before we had this inner product, AB, AB equal to A squared plus B squared. That's when AB was in R squared. But what if we have this set V of functions? Well, we can define another inner product. Let's say FG equal to the integral from minus 1 to 1 of F of X, G of X. And that's going to give us some kind of number, which is what we want. Now, if we want this to be a norm, say to get the length of a vector, we can just define that as, say, the norm of F equals to the square root of F with itself in a product, which is given by integral from minus 1 to 1 of f of x squared dx. So with this definition, we can write the formula fg equals the norm of f times the norm of g cosine theta, which would be the angle between f and g. And I say angle while using air quotation marks because we can't actually draw f and g as arrows in any real way in some Euclidean space, but we can treat it in that way by defining this inner product and this 
norm. So in this way, we come to the point that not all vectors are arrows. There are many objects that we call vectors simply because they satisfy the axioms of a vector space, but they are not arrows per se. The fact that we call them vectors in general comes from this geometric example, and the language has stuck over time. But not all vectors are arrows. Thank you.